Welcome to Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Brian Vergara. I'm Shane Bidet. And I'm Ethan Ramos. This is a show where we chat about whatever's on our minds every week. And this week, uh, we're here to talk about dreams. Fortnite. And Brian running into my mom at Universal. I was going to bring that up. I wanted to bring that up. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's just start right there. Because uh, I'm glad. I was. If he doesn't bring this up, I'm like, I'm going to bring this up. Uh, if you haven't noticed, that is not Stephen Lim. That's Ethan Ramos. He He's an editor for us here at Watcher. A lovely editor, uh, by the way. Uh, that's you. probably the closest thing we have to an Imagineer here, you know? <laughs> how How is that? <laughs> I think you're a dreamer, you know? I, I remember reading your list of uh, uh, series um, uh, ideas that you and Meredith had written up on that whiteboard. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. There were a lot of them. One of the ideas was that me and Ryan have a DJ battle. See, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. We need this sort of... It would not be a long battle. You would win very, very quickly. <laughs> DJ dead body. DJ Do dead body. Do you have a DJ name? Uh, it's just my Instagram name. So Ramos World. Ramos World. That's pretty good. I uh, We've been going through a crazy stretch here at Watcher. I mean... It's always crazy here, but in particular, the last five months have been absolutely nuts. And so, you know, Shane and I went on tour and then we shot a bunch. And so my wife- was, I got married. Shane got married. And my <laughs> wife was like, uh, you know, when that all finally ends and you guys wrap all that stuff, that last week of November, you should take that off and just sit and lay down and do nothing. And so I did do that. Oh, you did. Uh, and except one day- I decided to go to Universal Studios. It was Wednesday. It was on like 3 p.m. I was on the mummy ride at Universal. And I'm talking to Byron because Byron was there with me. And we were actually talking about For Your Amusement, the podcast that we do. And from behind me, I hear, I don't know if this is a world class. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, Whoa. <laughs> A for your amusement fan in, in in the wild, and and she was like, "Are you Ryan Bergara?" And I was like, "Yeah." And she was like, "I knew that voice. Uh, I I love for your amusement. Uh, I wouldn't wait sixty minutes for this ride." And, she, and then she looked at Byron. She was like, "I forgot your name, but <laughs> you're, you're great too." It was like that scene in uh, Avengers: Civil War or uh, Captain America: Civil War when Ant Man gets out of the uh, the van and yeah. he's like Captain America, and then he goes, "I know you too. You're great." Um, but anyway, she was like, uh. Also, I'm Ethan's mom. <laughs> Incredible. This all happens while we are like literally strapped in on a roller coaster and then the, the ride starts and I just had to kind of like let that gestate as the ride was going and I just knew Ethan's mom was behind me the entirety of this roller coaster. Yeah. And then we get off and honestly, in the roller coaster, here's Anxiety Disorder 101. I'm thinking like, oh my God, Ethan's mom's on this ride and she's like watching essentially Ethan's boss be on a roller coaster at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday. And were you... Um, was I out of it? Yeah. Yes, I was. <laughs> it was my day off. <laughs> How often do you go to a theme park um, not high? 50-50. Okay. I would say it's about 50-50. I'm just curious. Uh, but I mean, like... It, it, <laughs> And so I, I was thinking all of this while I was on the roller coaster. I was like, oh, my God. She's going to think, like, who does my son no, work for? I mean, no. she, she's clearly that, seen the content. And yeah. probably, <laughs> yeah. If she listens to your podcast. She was like, Ethan's at working, as you should be on a Wednesday at 3 p.m. And here's his boss on a roller coaster no, on the no. mummy. And so I felt compelled to tell her after. I was like, ah, you know, I'm just a universal, you know, here on my day off. I made sure to say day off. <laughs> I Which I take very few, very few. I, I didn't want her to think like that I'm just like going on a roller coaster. Oops, sorry, gotta check Slack. Gotta ch uh. <laughs> sorry, I'm slacking your son to get me that edit by uh, like 6 p.m. Uh, but yeah, I was very uh, concerned. Anyway, she's a lovely lady. I also met your father. Yeah, he's a, he's a man of few words. He was a man of few words, but uh, I did walk back to mention to be like, all right, see you guys later. And then as I was like walking away, I turned back around again and I'm like, I, at this point, I'm like, they definitely know there's something up with me right now. But I walked back and I was like, just want to let you know, your son's incredibly talented. And then your mom was like, oh, thanks. And then your dad was like, thank you. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> very, that's very him. He, I feel like if you don't know him on a personal level, he's very quiet, but he's also very charismatic when you get to know him. Like a lot of my humor and yeah. 
comes from him, I would say. That makes sense. But um, yeah, I have a text from my mom actually. <laughs> oh, I want. <laughs> oh no! To see this. <laughs> no, but it, you're. I feel like you're worried for no reason because she goes, "Dude, we just ran into Ryan." Sat behind him and his co-host on For Your Amusement, LOL. I said, that's hilarious. Did you say hi? And then she goes, yeah, but I was basically yelling at the sides of their heads because they were sitting in front of us on the mummy. Wouldn't be me if I didn't make it awkward. So she oh. she felt the social anxiety. As her, well. Yeah. Uh, that's good. And also, my mom is a proponent of, of the sleep gummies too, so I, <laughs> I don't think she would be tripping. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good to know. Parents love uh, gummies. W- gummies and weed now, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a thing. You know what it is? It's like they spent most of their life with that being a taboo yeah. item. And then now it's like, wait, this thing that like everyone was making a big deal about, you could just buy it like a, basically an Apple store? Right. And and I could just do it whenever? Like I would be out of my mind yeah. if I if I was a retired parent in particular. But when I when your dad said thank you, <laughs> I was like, he delivered it in a way where he it was like, obviously. <laughs> thank you. Obviously he's very talented. Thank you. And I was like, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> and I walked back up the starway. Uh but uh I I'm thankful that the interaction wasn't received poorly on your mom's end. Are your parents big theme park heads? Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like I grew up going to like Disneyland a lot. I had um, no idea. Yeah. Uh, that's why she watches For Your Amusement. She was like, the theme park podcast is like really well done. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ramos. That's and awesome. And then she talked about, um, what's the guy that was just on it that never shows his face? I forgot. Oh, Defunct Land. Yeah. I think she's watched him too. And she's like, oh, yeah, he's like really big in that scene. And I was like, you know more than about this than I do. He's the big dog. Yeah, I uh, I was truly impressed. I was like, "Well, I had no idea Ethan's parents are park heads. That's amazing. Yeah. Are they? Are they? Were they available? Did they yeah. to be on the pod? Or they, <laughs> <Ethan's> <laughs> they prob- mom. My mom probably would <laughs> kill it on the pod. Honestly, uh, is is did they, are they were they just taking the day off during the week, or are they are do they do that sometimes? Or are they retired? Or uh, sometimes they take the day off. That's yeah. incredible. So the dream. Yeah, they went with uh, I think my great uncle and then my grandma. Um, that makes sense. My or, mom actually used to work at Disneyland when she was young. Really? Oh, that's yeah. Amazing. She did. Um, she was like a. I think she would do like the characters. So she was like Mickey because she's like small she, enough to you, fit. She in, was a Mickey. She was oh, a Mickey. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, your parents, their their parents and the whole family's vibe really reminded me of my family's vibe. Which was interesting. What what vibe is that? I don't know. My <laughs> mom is a little like kind of more personable and goofy, she and my dad's a, a little more. She reserved. could be a Mickey. Your mom could my be. My mom a Mickey. could be a Mickey. Yeah, without the costume. Uh, <laughs> but they because uh, you actually remind me so much of my brother. I think this is like probably the sixth time you've you said it, this. It, yeah. <laughs> There's something about you, and I don't know quite what it is. That reminds me of Jake. You know Jake. I could see the similarities there. Yeah, you and my brother both have really good style. I would say that. Thank Ethan, you. Yeah, Ethan probably has like the the best fits in the office. I don't know even like this fit. I would have never came up with this. Honestly. <laughs> it's a it's a good. Like you have pretty good style too, though, Shane. Well, I mean, well, I agree. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, Jake's a dentist, though. He is a dentist Ethan's that takes not. him down a couple <laughs> points. <laughs> yeah, but like he's got like he's got a swag to him. Are those Merrells? These are Hoka's. Whoa. They are very comfortable. Ethan's showing off his shoes. Yeah, yeah. for the so viewers at home. Have, if you're listening to this. Or the listeners at home, right? You can go to YouTube and check out see the outfit. Ethan's feet. Hey, did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Not only that, but these silver infused sheets help prevent 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Now, sleeping on silver, oh, that must be uncomfortable, right? Wrong! Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. And I would know. So why not give the gift of comfy, cozy sleep? Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher. That's trymiracle.com slash watcher to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. 
And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40%. And if you use our promo code WATCHER at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Go ahead and upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher and use the code watcher to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash watcher to treat yourself, a friend, or a loved one this holiday season. I've ran into Jake like at least three. Well, I I always see him at things that I'm at. I've yeah. seen him at least three times and I'm always like, damn, like I don't really want to say anything because I don't think he knows who I am, but I definitely <laughs> know who he is and I keep seeing him at all these events. People t- tend to think that him and I look quite alike. I don't see it. Uh, I see the similarity, but not. Do you think you look like Scott? Yes. I could. You look enough like him not like, i would never confuse the two of you but no. i would never you for a second doubt brothers. that you were brothers exactly yeah. yeah that's how i feel about jake and i Bring god it. it's a funny thing brothers <laughs> if you if i was a genie and i could uh make you and scott into twins i would hate to have a twin i know you knew you would hate that <laughs> wait why <laughs> He hates twins. <laughs> you, you hate twins? No, I don't know what he's saying. He hates twins. twins. He's freaked out by I them. wouldn't love... I, it just seems like a rough... It seems rough because, you know, some twins lean into it. Have you ever seen those... Um, yeah. Have you seen those videos of, like, the twins who, like, talk t- together? Like the silent <laughs> twins. Remember well, they're, they're, they're they're were, they were up to a whole story. other thing. Then they started... They, they, were, the ones they wrote started... those, like, novels about, like, sexy disco killers and stuff yeah but then there was that set of twins who started like beating people with hammers remember that yes they like oh my god ethan have you seen this there is i think they were twins they they were they, you, they, the german they, ones they, they they killed some people and they were in a high speed chase on the freeway i think and, they just and, walked onto the freeway oh they walked onto the freeway and they were running away from the police and then they got hit by a car and lived and just like got up and kept they kept, kept running. running. Then they Bo- ran both to... the twins got hit by the car. I think just one of them got hit. One of them got oh. hit by a car. Sat up, ran away, went to someone's house and killed them with a hammer. That's what or it was. It was yes. that was crazy. There's footage of it. One real eye of the tiger. I, I yeah, don't... it took a Honda to the dome. But then there's those other twins that developed their own language, and and when so they wrote a bunch of like novel. I think they were silent except for they only spoke in their own language. Mm. Mm, and weird. then um. So they wrote all these novels that were like these high fantasy, but it was like murder and disco and roller skates. Hmm. Um, Weird. (laughs) And then eventually one of them died and the other one said, I'm finally free. Wow. That's interesting. I forgot what. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to my friends that are twins and ask them if they feel like this. (laughs) Ethan, do you have any siblings? I have a younger sister. Yeah. Uh, Would you, would you be? We're all older siblings here. Twin. Um, I assume no, but I don't know. Yeah, to have a twin, I guess I would hate being compared all the time. Yeah, I think... And I guess I would feel free if they were just gone. <laughs> I was so excited to bond with you guys over saying we're all older siblings here that I remember that I'm a younger sibling. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, look at us! Um, You feel... No, you feel like the younger sibling to your brother. Did you? We've already talked about siblings a bit on the show, but did have you guys ever felt like you could use one more, one more sibling? I, I feel think, like there are times when I'm like my my brother and I get along great. I've always wanted one more sibling, and that's no disservice to him. He's he's wonderful. I just always thought it'd be fun to have one extra party in the mix. I I have, but at risk of sounding well, at risk of sounding saccharine because I know you hate. When things that sound too sweet. It depends. Let me I, hear I, it. I always wanted a sister, but not for me. I wanted a sister so that my mom would have another woman in the house. So there'd be more female energy. I could. I mm. understand that. Sometimes as well. I felt bad that she was outnumbered three to one. Yeah, same. And like you know, we're watching like the Lakers and stuff like that. Yeah, and she's too. not like stoked about watching basketball. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I try and make time to just talk to her as much as I can about just anything that's not dude heavy. Uh, but she she had always lamented that she wished there was another. A woman in the house, which is nice because then I married Mari and then there's another female in, yeah. in the family. But uh, also, it would be nice to have a sister. I think it'd be fun. It'd be really cool. I, I imagine if I had a twin, the constant comparison 
and just being pitted against each other. I think and, you would go nuts if you had a twin. Well, it would just be weird because I would feel an extra urge to like really differentiate myself in terms That's of personality. Because like you don't want people to like just think you're the same. There's a weirdness to that. I don't know. I yeah. feel bad for them. I'd be like, but I'm like this, you yeah, know, all day, every day. <laughs> but I do this. If you, I, I, if you wore blue, I'd be wearing red. I'd yeah. make sure you could never dress the same. No, never dress the same. Though my mom used to dress my brother and I the same. I've got plenty of Christmas photos of us wearing matching bears sweaters. Well, she would dress us the same when we would go to a theme park so that we would be easy to identify That's and we call. wouldn't get lost just because we were running around. Well, he was more quiet. I was more like Donnie Thornberry, just <laughs> just running around the park. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, but let's let's get into maybe uh, a different topic here. Or actually, you know what? We never really fully established what you do here at Watcher, Ethan. I take... He doesn't mean in terms of this podcast. He means at large. <laughs> what, are you, what are you bringing to this podcast, Ethan? <laughs> I'm here to fill in for Steven. <laughs> uh, it, wait, before we move on, Steven, he came up to me at the holiday party. And he's like, I heard you want to be on Pod Watcher. And I'm like, yeah, I think it'd be fun. He's like, cool. Do you want to be on with um me and Shane or me and Ryan or Shane and Ryan? I'm like... Just surprised me. Choose so wisely. <laughs> now that I'm here, I realize that I'm he just here to fill in for him. No, I you know what that actually was was Shane and I were actually listening in on a wire and we were eagerly awaiting <laughs> to see how you would answer that, to see who you wanted to do the podcast with. And you chose the very noble answer. It was like, I'll take whatever. No, uh I think at some point we knew we knew some of us would be out at any given point. And right. We, we would want to bring people in to, to chat it'd be it's nice to You're also just like ha- introduce like all you guys listening and watching to the staff that yeah. makes all of the content that we do here possible <laughs> uh and uh it, ethan was the first one who came to mind because you actually expressed interest in doing it and also he's like our big gun editor here so uh, but yeah you, if you could explain what you do here at watcher that would be fantastic ethan yeah so i'm the lead editor here that sounds weird announcing that because you guys know that already, but <laughs> I'm, I am the lead editor at Watcher. Um, I'm responsible for crafting show looks. Um, I'd say Mystery Files is like the biggest one that I've worked on. Crushed it. Yeah. Very proud of Yeah, we of wrapped that up one. the shoot in the second season of that. Well, I, Is that I, a mystery? Is that... A we, secret. Well, I don't also, care about being secretive about our content anymore. We already shot season two. We did. Went well. Hey, really Simone's, fun. Simone's going to kill you. Our, I don't care. Our, our social media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I will say that a lot of... I think people have a misunderstanding of how important an editor is in the unscripted world. In the scripted world, obviously, they're still very important. But they're going off of a script. There's beats that they know they're going to hit. There's a spine there. Whereas for unscripted, there's a very loose spine. But for the most part, the unscripted editor is the person who's crafting the narrative. And I would say is responsible more so for the storytelling than anybody else on the entire production. So when we started Mystery Files, uh, Ethan had done such a good job on Ghost Files because he was a new editor at the time and he came in, did a Ghost Files episode, just crushed it, which is not normal for someone picking up a really dense format like that. Ghost Files is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And so we put him on Mystery Files and just was like, figure this out and help help craft what the show's going to be. Obviously, we had like a loose outline. Here are the things we want to happen, but all the stuff that you know results in between that and the the different storylines that come between like the characters and characters the people uh <laughs> is all ethan and so yeah, yeah he did an amazing job and uh because every series kind of has its own well one every series has its own like technical hijinks that you have exactly to yeah understand and learn but then there's also like the bigger picture of like the overall spiritual vibe of the show the flow of it the sort of unwritten rules what, what do you feel like the spiritual vibe of mystery files is there's a certain mystery to it (laughs) i would say there's also some files yeah i Uh, I was gonna say dude i was gonna say don't forget about the files um i don't know i i'm actually very excited for season two because i think season one uh which is true of a lot of season first seasons it's like you're you're sort of flying by the seat of your pants uh mystery files i think was the most uh thoroughly crafted show yeah um, and that's also not surprising because it's the first like big temple show we've done that wasn't crafted by either you or I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Shane and I 
are very much insular, I would say, in our creative process. Yeah. And to the very big detriment of the team around us, yeah. I would say I'm a little worse than you, but uh, it's close. But you, you don't have to deal with puppet history post-production. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it's close. Half it, the, I mean, there's been puppet history finales where people are like, well, like the post team will be like, well, we're excited to see how th this episode ends, Shane. <laughs> well, because it's you have to understand, and I know we're really getting into the weeds here, but when yeah. we were at BuzzFeed, we were basically trained to be jack of all trades producers. We would literally do everything. We would write, edit, produce, be in it. And so when you get used to that kind of environment, when you're yeah. making a show, you're like, okay, I'm just going to do this. But now at Watcher, we have this wonderful infrastructure and people need to know what their marching orders are. And if it's all just up in your head and you're not good at like delegating and kind of communicating that, it's, it's it gets tough. So like even something like Ghost Files took forever even though I did try my best to kind of like put it all on paper and here's where like, you know, you make like a paper edit, you say what exactly you want the episode to be. Uh, but luckily now we have this team. And so for something like Mystery Files, it's gotten to the point now where I remember my original pitch for that show was just like, I want a show where we basically, you know, saw we do mysteries like we had done before, but some could be solved, some could be unsolved. There's a reveal. I think it should have the vibe of this kind of like basement guys in a basement talking. I think I put I gave Annie and Brittany a clip of that scene from it where they yeah. are showing what happened to the history of Derry. There's a there's a projector and then it's you know, you use the projector as kind of a character. That's all I said. And then Annie and Brittany went out and actually made the show and then huddled together with Ethan and the three of them uh, in particular really crafted that show into what it is and it's not a surprise that it's one of our more heavily and a uh, fine-tunedly crafted shows because it had nothing to do with just me doing it on my own i think that's kind of the beauty of having a team you could depend on i think second uh, seasons are nice though because you get through that first season of uh, it, even as as meticulously crafted as that was you still learn a lot from your first season yeah. more so than you do that's true you know second seasons are always yeah. fun it's time to stop freaking out and start microdosing. There's so much you encounter throughout your day that steals your attention or occupies that valuable brain space of yours. Well, many people are trying microdosing to get in the right headspace and stay there. And today's sponsor, Microdose Gummies, are great at helping relieve anxiety. I personally just love popping a half of a gummy on a nice night in. It helps boost my mood and ability to relax. All that icky thinking I've been doing all day just melts away allowing me to live in the moment. I also find it's great for boosting my focus and creativity. Just clearing my brain of all that stuff, trying to take my attention away from what I really want to be doing, which is being in the moment. But you don't have to take my word for it. If you're interested in trying it for yourself, it's your lucky day, because we have a deal for you. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code WATCHER to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Again, that's microdose.com, code WATCHER. microdose.com, code WATCHER for 30% off. By the way, it's really funny right now because we're filming this in the podcast room and there's a, there's a glass wall behind this camera if you're watching this and we could see who's in the other room. And Anthony, <laughs> Anthony DeVera just walked in and he's one of our other editors. He's your roommate, right? Yeah, he's my roommate. So he just literally walked in here and he looked at Ryan and Shane. He's like, oh, hey, guys. And then he saw me and he's like, <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, we just discussed Ethan's parents. <laughs> let's move on to it. either. What do you want to do, Shane, me or you? I don't remember what yours was. Why don't we do yours? Mine was Dreams. Yours was Fortnite. I kind of have a, one that dovetails those two things. Then let's do you. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a dream about it yesterday or last night. We'll start with why you want to talk about Fortnite and then we'll go. Well, I only want to talk about it because I saw people saying Shane's been referencing Fortnite a lot lately. He should just talk about it on an episode. I so, saw they added Peter Griffin. Peter. Which is really, I can't believe they, I mean, it's a layup what they did, but I'm glad they did do it. When they you did. get, when you get down, he They've does had some the, real uh, bangers lately. The knee they, thing. <laughs> they <laughs> got, the, yeah, he does that. Ah. <sighs> But in October, they did Michael Myers and Jack Skellington. Yeah. Um, they got Homelander in there, or is that Call of Duty? They do. They, they do? Homelander or wait, in there? I think they do. 
Oh, no, no wait, no. He's in Mortal Kombat. He's in Mortal Kombat. Yes, yes. It's so weird because I, I remember getting Mortal Kombat 2 when it came out and playing a bunch of them after that. I've never clocked any story from that game whatsoever. I've always been like, now I'm fighting this guy. Did you watch the films, though, growing Loved up? Loved them. God, they're so good. They're good. They're bad, but they're good. I think the first one is legitimately good. I don't think that's a bad movie. I it's just I um, think you should revisit it because I thought the same. Thing. I have it some. I I did maybe five years ago, but it's one of those movies that is like. I think it's good for what it is. I think that's fair, but I think on its own, judged by its own merit, like in a vacuum, it's not a good film. Hmm. I don't know. I love it. Like, I agree with you that it's good for what it is. It's one of those bad movies that, like, is bad, but good in the tier that it sits, if that makes sense. It it achieves what it sets out to achieve. There are some great set pieces in that movie. Yeah. Have you seen the Mortal Kombat live action film? The first, like, ones that came out in the 90s? I don't think so. There's an incredible scene. All you have to watch is just the one Goro? scene on YouTube. That scene's great, too, when Johnny Cage fights Goro. Actually, Johnny Cage has the best fight scenes in that movie. I think at general. some point on Twitter, I I photoshopped you on Goro, <laughs> and just said Ryan Bergoro. That's really good. And it never picked up any traction. I don't know you why that didn't. Retweet that. Go viral. I'll retweet it. I'm I'm done with Twitter. My account is shut down. That's really good. All my tweets are gone. Oh, that's right. I yeah, forgot. they're Whoa. gone, dude. He did it. He left. I respect it. I left months ago. He left a long time ago. That's right. I respect it because Shane. I loved Twitter he more than anything Twitter, in the world. And I actually was the biggest, uh, I don't like it that much, but I was lamenting the fact that there was nothing out there that could give me uh, information as readily with all my interests as Twitter. Yeah. And then, and then whatever happened with what, you know, now it's X. And, no, it's and, just full of a bunch of racists. And, and it probably was before too, but I had always was. very heavily curated my feed to the point where it's like, I was only seeing people I wanted to see and. And then it just got too much. But also, you got to watch the uh, Johnny Cage versus Scorpion. Oh, that's that good. In the woods? Is With so like all good. the skinny trees? Yeah, the skinny trees. There's a great score to that scene. It's like a... It's like just snare drum, essentially. It's, I don't know, it's like a, just like a drum on like some sort of like the edge of the... Uh, sticks on the edge of a uh -huh. drum, if that makes sense. Also, yeah. you know that song they play at the end of the movie? I think it's called like Halcyon On and On. It's a... Doom, 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 doom. You know that one? Oh, yeah. no. And I will say, just to close this Mortal Kombat loop, because we're supposed to be talking about Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> is yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. the beginning of, I can't remember if it was the final film of that little, like, it was like a trilogy, right? Or was it two movies? I, I saw the first two in theaters. I don't, I think there was, was there a third? There's one that starts with like a lightning storm. Oh. And it's like on a big battlefield and a very beloved character. Oh, that's the second one because they killed Johnny Cage right away. Well, shit, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's a little movie from 1994. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not seen it. He's like, he's like, he wasn't even born in 1994. You yeah. were born in 1994, no. right? Jesus Christ. When were you born? 98. Yeah. Armageddon? Or was that 97? Wow. 98. What would be your birth year movie? What was the best movie released in 1998? Was that the year Armageddon came out? What won Best Picture in 98? Was that Titanic or was it 97? Titanic came out in 97. It won in 98. So it would technically be 97 Best Picture then. I don't know. Armageddon, Deep Impact, Saving Private Ryan. That won Best Picture in 98? And A Bug's Life. No. I'm just Bug's Life? Highest grossing. What won Best Picture in 98? Bug's Life is such a fucking banger. Movie. You're as old as I, Bug's I Life. Watched, I watched that when Move I was a kid. On. I watched all the Star Wars movies because my grandma loved Star Wars. That's sick. You have a cool family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out my family. <laughs> At the 1999 Oscars of the 1998 films, Shakespeare in Love won Best Picture. Never seen it. Oh, that was an upset too. I that was not. The I movie. mean, it was like critically beloved, but it was not the movie that should have won. For my recollection, it beat Saving Private Ryan. Private Ryan. That's what it was. Yeah. Life oh. is beautiful. Uh, life is beautiful. Thin, thin red line. That, those well, life is beautiful won a bunch of other things though. That was when Roberto Roberto Benigni, Benigni. Benigni. stood on <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare in Love, not a better movie than Saving Private Ryan. Never but. seen it. It's it's a. Uh, what's your favorite movie, Ethan? Before, before oh, we continue God. to talk about Fortnite, yeah. I hate this question. I, I don't know. I I've never had a favorite movie. You've had a couple though. Like you can name a couple off the top of your head for sure. I feel like the most recent one I watched was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh God, that movie is so fucking good. It was just so well done, and like I feel like the concept was felt fresh. Yeah, yeah. Especially the way that they did it. So that movie absolutely destroyed me. Yeah. Was there a movie that made you want to get into editing? You know what's weird? I feel like I I started editing because I liked YouTube. 
And I, I, I didn't like BuzzFeed I, Unsolved. <laughs> I watched. I actually watched BuzzFeed Unsolved growing up. What? <laughs> I yeah, that. I did. That's and crazy. I yeah. So, um, I was in like film school, and people were doing all these uh, student films, and I was like, "Hmm, I'm kind of not interested in what you guys are making." <laughs> That's so wild. I mean, I would love to work on a film for sure. Like, yeah. I think as I've edited more, I, now I'm more feel- like I can do. Because before I was like, I don't know if I could do long form content. Yeah. And then I started working on Ghost Files. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, I could definitely do a... You've made several short films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I've always found, like when I was in college and I was editing narrative scripted stuff. Yeah. I find that so satisfying. But, and I don't mean this disrespectfully really easy <laughs> well it's because you're not you're you're not you have a narrative already laid out for you you're not crafting yeah. the narrative i enjoy the challenge of unscripted editing it's yeah. hard it's really hard yeah uh which is why we're happy we have here it's <laughs> really hard <laughs> but uh i i do have to ask you this and this is petty did you watch worth it i did watch worth it damn it i was really hoping you didn't because that would have been so but, awesome. it'd be funny but, if you was like what is uh, that Ah, uh, that's what I was really <laughs> hoping for, because then I could lord it over Steven. Well, okay, I can oh, I can say this. I I what I think I watched Unsolved more. That's what we love. That's to what hear. we love to hear. That's what Ryan Sorry, loves Steven. to hear. Take that, Steven. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. <laughs> Steven used to call them powerpoints. Uh, <laughs> but he wouldn't know though, because he was too afraid to watch them. That's true. We did put Steven in that cell in London. He shivered in his little boots. Yeah. Talked to Jesus the he entire went time. Borderline catatonic. I mean, he kind of went into like a monk-like state where he was just kind of repeating the same phrases. <laughs> That's actually a really good impression of what his face looked like. For for those of you listening, I'm sorry, but he's doing a great Stephen Lim right now. Good Lim. Wait, what is the con? Like you, what is the context of this? You put him. in? We a- went to London in 2019. 29- 2020, no, 2020, 2020 right mere weeks before the pandemic. a little thing called COVID-19. And Watcher at this point was only in the public eye for about, I want to say two months. <laughs> and so we went to uh, we went to VidCon there to do a panel for, uh, they invited us over there to do a panel for BuzzFeed Unsolved. Uh-huh. But we were like, we will come over and do a BuzzFeed Unsolved panel as long as you let us talk about Watcher. And we had done an episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved at the Viaduct Tavern, which was nearby. And that's a, a little gym palace like bar. And at the bottom of the bar in the basement was a jail. And they used to have a jail that they would, it was called, I think, the Old City Jail. I can't remember what it was actually called, but something like that. Um, and we uh, saw that the bartender who was working that night was the same guy who was there when we shot the episode. Very nice guy. And he was like, you guys want to come down and go to the jail? Yeah. Uh, Wait. That that's that was what he opened with. No. 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 He did not open with. <laughs> you guys want to come? He brought us some big gins. He brought us big gins. Oh, uh, because it's no. a gin palace. What he actually think the first thing he said was, "Hey, boys, welcome back." And, and yeah. it was just kind of one of those things where it was delivered in very NPC fashion. Yeah, it sounds like, like yeah. a quest. Like like he'd just been there like scrubbing like. <laughs> <laughs> like dishes and like uh, and like uh, steins this entire time, but he he was very nice. And then he had mentioned like, uh, "Hey, if you guys want, I could take you down to the jail again." And I was like, "This would be great because we could take Stephen Lim down there." And Stephen was like, "I could do this. I'm not scared." And so we were like, "Okay." Sounds like Stephen. <laughs> Why don't we put you in that jail alone and see how it happens for five minutes? And he was like, "I can do it." And gets down there, and basically, like Shane says, goes into like. <laughs> this kind of like catacon- catatonic cocoon state mm-hmm. where he just sat there and he was just refused to say anything. And we were like, you have to talk. You have to reach out to the spirits. He's like, I'm not talking to anything. I don't want to, I don't want any possibilities. And instead he just had like, a, I think he had a candle and he just talked to Jesus the entire time. Yeah. And that was his big triumphant. I could do it kind of thing. So now I, I do. So why when people are like, is he going to come on ghost files? We're like, I mean, he could. I think he'd have a heart attack. I don't think he would. It would be very engaging content. He would be very much like the very uh, much maligned chill Ryan. Zen Ryan. Yeah. Because mm. that's what I did in that one episode of ghost files. There was it was just too horrible there. I knew if I'd went in there and didn't cocoon my my brain, I I might have had a panic attack. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I did that, but I'm not doing that in season three. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to destroy my brain. Oh, it's the holiday season. And if you're like me, you've waited till the last minute and are swiping that credit card info left and right all over the internet. But if you're doing that without NordVPN, you could be at risk. NordVPN is a service that protects your internet connection and your privacy online by creating an encrypted tunnel for your data, protecting your online identity by hiding your IP address. And Nord is the fastest VPN in the world. No buffering or lagging while you're streaming. And it stops your ISP bandwidth from throttling. And while you can and should get NordVPN for the safety and security it provides, my favorite feature is the ability to watch sports events, TV shows, and films that aren't available in your region by switching your virtual location to a country that's showing it. <laughs> At the mere cost of one cup of coffee a month, you kind of can't afford not to. But how about we sweeten that deal? To grab our huge discount off your NordVPN plan, go to nordvpn.com slash podwatcher. Our code will also give you four extra months on the two-year plan. There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, baby. The link is in the episode description box. Again, to try NordVPN, go to nordvpn.com slash podwatcher. Now back to the show. Uh, but anyways, Fortnite. Shane. Yeah. It's <laughs> next topic i you need to tell us more about fortnite i had a dream that i was playing fortnite and uh, alone this is real weird i had a dream i was playing fortnite and i saw a house that in the window was abraham lincoln is this the censored version because you did say you were going to tell us the censored version i would like okay, you to i'll tell, tell you the uncensored version don't father it thomas us. it doesn't make a lot of sense to me anyway and it's a fairly clinical, uh, it's not very... Are we on camera right now? So... Remember that? I, I, so I saw a house and Abraham Lincoln was in it, in Fortnite. And then I went in the house. Yeah. And he was gone. Now, when you said you saw him in the house, is he staring out the window? He was looking out the window. It was nighttime. Can well, you see all of him or was it just like his torso because sort of he's so tall? Top, yeah. And I went in and suddenly he was gone. But there was sort of like a vampire type man. He was like glowing. And the vampire man came up to me and started like eating me. He wasn't like vampire biting my neck. He was just like biting like a zombie. my character. And he said the, what he said specifically. Oh, your character. Yeah, I'm playing the game. In the dream, I was like just sort of there though, you know. You were. Wait, I'm just, just trying to get specific here. <laughs> you are in the world of Fortnite in the dream. And you are your character. Are you seeing? I don't know. It's a dream. Is it FPS or are you third person? I don't remember. Like you, you I think it was third person. You could, yeah. Could you see your hands? But like I don't. This? I wasn't dreaming of like myself at the computer. But it was like third person. Weird. But then the guy who's biting me said, and I'm pretty sure this is what he said. He said, "There's no Labraham Lincoln here," and I didn't understand why he put an L at the beginning. <laughs> Labraham Lincoln. Maybe like your labrum, like your shoulder. Well, I was like, he made it sound like it was a pun like the word labia or something and i was like i don't understand oh this. that's where you went i i, I was <laughs> or, like maybe he was biting your shoulder or like lay like laying down i didn't know i was very confused and i was like what the fuck is going on in fortnite <laughs> um and then so then for the rest of the night i i sort of like woke up at one point i was like that was crazy what happened to me in fortnite I was like, wait a minute, was that was a dream though, right? And then I sort of fell back asleep and I think I dreamed of going online and searching like Fortnite, Abraham Lincoln. Labraham Lincoln. Labraham Lincoln, meaning. <laughs> and then I like confirmed, I like found an article about it. I was like, it is real. And then I sort of like, I was like in and out of consciousness. And at some point I woke up, I was like, okay, I looked it up. It's definitely real. But I was like, but I'm pretty sure I looked it up in my dream. Um, Did you look it up on your phone or your laptop? Then later in the night, because I kept having dreams about like looking it up and doing research it on like a it. Nightmare. Eventually, I grabbed my phone and searched <laughs> Labraham Lincoln <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, vampire. I think I might have put vampire on there too, but um, 
So this is the first time I've had a dream about Fortnite, but I think it's because it's just a very exciting time. Uh, you know, we've we, there's a whole new island. Um, we're having a lot of fun on there. A lot of fun. Yeah, you got really into it because we've kind of talked about it in the periphery of this podcast. I did not know. I'm so because I don't really play a lot of those games. You did. You never did. That's Ethan, why have I was, you? Are you? Or where are you I, on video games? So I used to game a lot before college. So yeah, I. And in college a bit, but I, I did play a lot of Fortnite. And, you did? Yeah, like FPS games. They're, so I I really don't play a ton of them at all. I play a lot of like narrative video games. Yeah. I play a lot of like multiplayer games. Like Red Dead Redemption or you're like more like a Skyrim guy. Yes. Ooh. I used to play a ton of like GTA online with friends That's before it got bad. Um, and Red Dead, like the first Red Dead had some fun if janky multiplayer. Um, but... Uh, I was very out of the loop on Fortnite until uh, we had to come home from Montana because Ryan got COVID. That's right. And I quarantined in our bedroom at home for like five days because I didn't want Sarah to get COVID. And wh while I was quarantining, my brother was like, oh, you've got your PC in there. You should play Fortnite with me. And I was like, mm. and he had told me a few times, they like, oh, I've been playing Fortnite. And I was like, what are you because <laughs> uh, honestly the thing that turned me off was the people building forts it seemed stressful but they have a one i found out they had a is that no why it's called fort yeah yeah oh my god because you, you can build you build them real fast which is funny because that's the shittiest part of that game well some people love that um but there's that's also a there's take. a there's a <laughs> he, i don't like it no I, a lot I, of people do like it but there's also a lot of people like me who like the zero build version which yeah. they eventually released um it was originally a tower defense game. Tower defense. Which zombies would attack you and you'd build a fort. Right. And then they added the battle, battle royale. Yeah. Actually, I like that. I like the building a fort to fortify against zombies. That sounds fun. <laughs> people like the, the mechanic because you can have like a crazy like skill gap from other people. Yeah. Oh. It's like a the building mechanic is like you can get, you can get very good at it. And to be clear, why I don't like it is because of that. Because <laughs> I it was too confusing. It was too much stimulation. Well, for that's me. why you do zero zero build, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they it's kind of interesting. I'm I'm curious how many other games, I don't know if anyone here can speak to this. Matt, I don't know if you're familiar with this or Ethan, but the I think it's really interesting how they do sort of these like seasons where it's like, this is what the island is like right now. Yeah. It's going to mm. change and you're never going to be able to play that again. The past few weeks uh, or earlier in like November, they did uh, OG seasons yeah. where for like every week they went back to like how it was in what year? I don't know, 20. I, I forgot what year, but it's like close to like the original yeah map like, which i had never played people were very excited about it because of the nostalgia hit of it of being like oh this is how it was when i first started playing like this is what the old island used to look like so then for like a week it was like the first island and then the next week it evolved a little i see and so they ran through like four or five iterations of that over the course of a month and then they introduced the new chapter or season which is a whole new island which is very fun it's cool but i can see how it's frustrating for some people not to be able to just go back to the OG island. Uh, yeah, that's how really I cool. felt about Call of Duty. Do they do that on that too? Yeah, they have like different battle royale maps and stuff like that. And they but just sort of lock them up in the I, vault. I don't. People would probably hate me in Call of Duty by my play style. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Well, no, this unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, no, my play style is what you would call a, a roach. I'm a, I'm like a little cockroach. Because you just hide. I like using tactics. I like getting uh, fortifying a little room moving strategically to a different room and then just mm. i'm playing for the win i'm not trying to like go out there and get my stats up and like trying to get my kdr you know because i'm not good at the game i'm not good like if it comes to a firefight and it's one-on-one -on -one with me and a person in a room and i don't have a distinct advantage yeah. i'm gonna lose every single time because i'm just not very good at first person shooters but i do like the idea of moving through a map with the team trying to stay alive together it's re it's uh, it's gorgeous. Every it seems like every time they introduce a new map, people complain about it a, a lot. Um, but I just have a good time playing, and I don't really care. People hate change. People hate change. That's very. Do true. they have uh, um, kill comms in that game? What? Oh no, they don't. <laughs> Fortnite because they're no. very funny. Yeah, that's where like people can talk to you as as they're down. as they're well. Once you kill someone in Call of Duty, there's about three seconds 
where you could hear what they say as they die. Yeah. <laughs> and when I kill people, it is usually the most angry people because they're like, are you fucking kidding me? Hiding behind a corner? And then I just, it just gets cut off. And I'm always like, <laughs> you're right. I Can am. they hear you? Uh, no, well, they hear me when they kill me. And I usually always make like, an involuntary noise like ah, or, <laughs> yeah. you moan yeah it's just like uh my my cousin who i play with all the time <laughs> he makes the like the noise as if he's bleeding out he'll go ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and so like we'll know like if my like his name is michael if he's like looking at if he's on watch and we hear him make that noise we're like oh we're being breached because yeah. we'll usually fortify in this little room like i said I bet you people listening to this right now, if you're a Call of Duty player, you're like, this guy sucks because like <laughs> that you hate people like me because like it's Roach style. I think everyone should play Fortnite if they have I think it. I would enjoy it. I You've uh, been trying to get me to play it for a while. And I, now that we, we have some time. Where are our gaming uh, PCs here? There, do we? Can we set those back up and just play? I, I'd be down to play. We could go into the survival <laughs> mode and just play, dude. Um, the... Uh, it's funny because, you know, we usually play it just for funsies. Yeah. Uh, we, we win... I, we win battle royale of uh, you know i don't know one in every 10 games well, that's pretty good you know a lot of times we're second place i think it generally matches you with people of similar skill here on the pod i have talked a lot about just how hard it is to consistently get to the gym with a busy schedule and shoot days regularly meeting a trainer at the gym is out of the question. And honestly, with the travel, I can't even rely on working out with the same equipment. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Copilot. Copilot is a personalized fitness solution. At Copilot, they know that every individual is unique, so your fitness journey should be too. Copilot's app links you with an affordable real-life fitness coach who customizes workouts tailored to your individual needs, goals, and lifestyle. Style. At Copilot, they know all the reasons people don't get a regular workout in and do their best to remove all of those barriers. With Copilot, you'll get completely personalized workouts with step by step guidance. Your coach continuously updates and adapts every workout to your goals, schedule, and injuries. I do a lot of traveling, and trust me, hotel gyms are unreliable. The best part about Copilot is that you're freed up to work out at your convenience with or without a gym. But it's not just for travel. When I can make it to my home gym, Copilot is just as useful. My coach knows what I'm able to physically do, how often I'm able to get to the gym, what kind of injuries I'm dealing with, and can always adapt to however that changes. And going into the new year, that's going to be a lifesaver. I'd love for you to follow my lead to get fit and feel fabulous. Give Copilot a try to find out why it was listed by Forbes as the top rated personal trainer app of 2023. Head to mycopilot.com slash watcher to get a 14 day free trial and 20% off your first month of personalized fitness with your own personal trainer if you sign up before February 1st, 2024. That's mycopilot.com slash watcher to get a free 14 day trial and 20% off your first month. Sign up for the new year and let Copilot help you reach your fitness goals. Let me ask you this, because this will determine how you play the game and what you value. Mm. It, would you rather have a game where you have an amazing kill death ratio where you've just were just really ripping? Or would you rather have a game where you won Battle Royale? It's a toss up. I do. It's always nice to get a, a VR of a, a victory royale. Um, <laughs> but it it is a bummer when you're like playing a whole round and like you barely see anyone. Yeah, it's nice because there's that's been my times, ideal play. There's been right times there. where we we don't win the whole battle royale but there's like maybe a five to ten minute stretch in the middle where we as a team yeah. are just like just annihilating people like we may yeah. get like surrounded by a bunch of people and we're just like we may not have won that but god damn we did we really I, cleaned up in the middle of that you know i think it's a maturity thing yeah because when i was younger i i would just i don't care for the win it's like i just want to rip on people yeah right? exactly but now as you get older and you play with people that were your age, you're like, damn it, I, why aren't you playing for the objective? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've become the people that you didn't like when you were younger, but that now I'm like, 
I do. I want to win. It's a matter of circumstance too, though, because when you're younger, you have all day to play this and get really good. When you get older and you get a job, yeah. <laughs> you have to. Then you, you only have all night. You, yeah. Well, if you, I, I couldn't do that because then I'd be groggy the next day. I played Call of Duty when it was the pandemic, and I just had an abundance that, of time. That's the thing. So one of the people who's sort of in my regular group of players, one of my dear, dear friends uh, who I've known since kindergarten, uh, who lives up in a, he lives in a very remote uh, house up in Northern California. So he's down to play whenever because he's like, there's nobody around. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, And he's like, yeah, I've been playing since, you know, I got into it right at the start of the pandemic. And I was, I'm kind of upset that he didn't, tell me about it would you have played though i would have played it all pandemic long there would have been no puppet history i would have quit watcher (laughs) (laughs) i I definitely lived for call of duty fridays that's how they got me through the pandemic just because i was able that's the only way i was able to hang out with my friends that was like the reason why i started it actually it might be helpful it's helpful now i mean we've already talked about it for like 15 minutes but it might be helpful for you to explain what a battle royale type game is oh, to any so listener. Good. And I've I've always uh because like PUBG was the first game that sort of really took off. Never played right? it, but I've heard about yeah. it. I I can't remember if I played it or if I just watched playthroughs. But so Battle Royale, it's 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 a concept that I've always really liked. Um, but I've just the games that have used it haven't really appealed to me because they're they're very like military coded and kind of like <laughs> I want to play Fortnite because I can be a you know a Peter giant banana Griffin. or a Peter Griffin. Yeah. And you can do that in Call of Duty. It's too. sort of it. It's a nice. Call of Duty. It cuts it a little bit. You know, it 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 goes down smooth when yeah. you're being murdered by Jack Skellington. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. So Battle Royale, which I mean, is this? Does it harken back to the movie? Yeah, I think it comes in the movie. It's gotta right. Yeah. So there was an old movie. Uh, yeah, it was a Japanese a Japanese movie film, right? It was yeah. Battle Royale, Look. which. It was a book initially. Yeah. So Battle Royale was like, it's uh, the movie was a bunch of kids on an island and uh, they would, they had to kill each other and certain zones would start closing if you were in those zones. And that's essentially how the video game works. Uh, You're on a bus that's flying above an island. You jump out. The whole island's open to you. You and your teammates like pick a spot to land. You parachute in. You grab as many weapons and guns as you can. You grab your loot. loot. Uh, and then, uh, like 90 seconds will go by and suddenly on the map, you'll see a a circle, uh, that is smaller, slightly smaller than the Island. And you have to get to that circle because a storm will start like essentially a big force field will start moving toward that circle. You'll die if you're outside the circle. If you're outside, you'll start losing health and die. Um, and then as the match goes on, the circle gets tighter and tighter so that the surviving teams are sort of pressed into a very tight combat zone and you all have to a pretty good succinct uh, description of that. I, what's your, what's your strategy? Are you a guy that drops into a really hot zone where there's a bunch of people or are you trying to go on the outskirts and work your way in? It's really, we don't have a strategy in terms of like. I don't know. We we mostly go for places that feel like they've got a lot of good loot. Um, so it's like like armor and whether weapons, or not ammo. A, whether or not a team is there is not really part of the strategy. Uh, when you're shooting in, it'll usually show you like you can see on your radar like oh there's another team coming in here. So yeah. get stuff fast because we're probably gonna have to. Yeah. It's gonna be hot. So uh, other times it'll be like a full hornet's nest, and you're like oh you know we're, we're gonna get. Uh, murdered here unless we really work together no you Sometimes can drop into an area our team don't listen to each other and think uh maybe it's wiser to you know go a little further out of the way and loot by themselves and then uh we pay the price for that <laughs> uh, that's why you're gonna have like-minded individuals on your squad yeah because for my folks me and my cousins and my brother well, my brother is a bit of a hothead, though. Is he yeah. like he likes going into hot zones? And we've tried to put our ego. Actions. We've tried to put our egos I aside. And, and, uh, uh, I don't like the hot zones. I love the hot zones. I enjoy the hot zones, but I want to loot comfortably. I want to go through crates, find my ammo, get my armor, yeah. get my guns without having to worry about someone shooting me in the ass. Yeah, on the old map, I saw someone, I think, on one of the recent podcasts or tweeting at me being like, what were your favorite drop zones on the most recent island before the OG uh, seasons? And I, I got to give a big shout out to Brutal Bastion, Naughty Nets. Those were my go-tos. Uh, really loved those. These are locations. These are locations. Um, in the new one, there's on the new island, there's a train. Yeah, there's, that's awesome. Uh, which Love you can choo-choo. see moving on the map. 
uh, so we've been dropping onto the train and just catching oh, it while dope. it's moving. That's fine. Because um, nobody seems to be doing that. The loot on it isn't incredible. I'm having a great time. I'm really having fun. Fighting on a train is great. That's something that has always been the coolest scene in any movie. Right. Yeah. And like to be able to do it in a video game is great. Then again, now that I think about it, there's been a lot of bad fight scenes on mo- on trains recently. Most recently, Indiana Jones Dial of the De- uh, Dial of Destiny. Dial of Destiny. That was a bad fight scene on a train. Um, there was one in was Solo, wasn't there too? Yeah. I liked the one in Solo. It was, it was one of okay. The few bits of the movies that I actually enjoyed. Spider Man Two, probably the goat train fight scene, in was my there opinion. A fight fight yeah. with Doc Ock and so, Spider Man yeah. on that train. Yeah. yeah, shit is fucking sick. I feel like I really liked the one in Solo. I kind of forgot about. Do you that. remember that part in Spider Man Two? Then when Doc Ock throws Spider Man up towards that little bridge thing. You know how bridge ha- uh, bridges have like cutouts on the walls of like holes. Yeah, and in Spider Man adjusts his body. To fly through the little slit in the wall. Oh. I remember when I saw that as a kid, I was like, oh! <laughs> yeah, there's always like a thread the needle Spider Man moment in every single movie, and it's always like the dopest moment. Yeah, it is, train fight scenes, gotta love them. Go through a tunnel, have to duck under the tunnel. Yeah. It's good stuff. There, there was another one that happened recently that Dead I can't, Reckoning. Probably. Dead Reckoning. Dead Reckoning, a lot yeah. of great train shit. Man, that ending were Dead Reckoning spoilers. Have you seen Dead Reckoning? No. Do you care? Oh, dude, it's great. No, you can spoil it. You, you seen the missions? Oh my god, you're right. That train scene fucking rips. That might be it's the just crazy. Yeah, the third act of the it just thing. keeps going. It's good in a good way. You're just like, holy shit! The escalates. What's this... in this train car? That's what's crazy. Is it's like a train you're fight like, they scene. They made it up. Everything's great. It, it, it nope. will... It's a train fight scene, and you think, okay, I know the stakes, I know the circumstances, and somehow, while still being on a train, they change and escalate. Yeah. Continually for like yeah. a thirty-minute scene. God, it's so, so fucking good. The next movie. Should we move on to dreams? Yeah. Uh, so dreams. I just wanted to talk about kind of what you are talking about. Do you guys, in your opinion, think dreams mean anything? And we'll start with Ethan. Is this a lo- this is a loaded question? This is a loaded question, and I've actually thought about this recently because for most of my life, it was no, but my my partner right now she is very heavily like yes so i've been like trying to analyze my dreams more and one of the dreams i have it's a recurring dream where i'm back in college and for some reason i have this this science class dude that you haven't gone yeah, to all semester yeah, yes that i haven't gone to the whole <laughs> yeah, semester i had this one all I've, the time i've had this here and there we continue because i want to see if it's exactly the same and it's horrible because i guess in the dream i'm in the mindset of like I can cram and figure it out. And I get there and I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to fail. I'm going to flunk. And it's over. My life is over. Yeah, because you can't graduate. No. I think this is also what separates people because I think most people have the dream, which is weird, that you there is some class that you've just somehow forgotten about all semester. <laughs> yeah. It's so and, funny. And then sometimes people will either just be like, I guess I don't won't go to that class. But some people in the dream will go to the class and talk to the professor, which sometimes Whoa. happens to me. No, that's never happened. I will go to the professor and be like, hey, I'm here for class. And then sometimes the professor will be like, who are you? Or like a little, sni- like a little, sn- a little snarky remark, like, oh, we finally showed up. Oh, you're you're Ryan Bergara. Uh, like, and- Ooh, he graces us with his Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Some kind of dead poet society bullshit like that. Uh, I that- did that in a class, I think my freshman year, because... uh, acknowledging that thing where people are like why would you not go to class when you're in college but when i was at northern illinois university there was like a i had like one uh like one of the requisite classes where it was like a science class i was like i don't want to fucking take geology No, no but it was like you know in your first like year or two when sometimes you're like well you gotta do one of these too um and it was a geology class and the surprising i think you would like that now no no, it's just a bunch of rocks. I, I think I could see you digging a class where you're just like looking, biology, at, looking at a geode. <laughs> biology I'm into, but I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a little too sciencey. I never did well with like chemistry. Mm. Uh, like the the more not, all due respect, the more boring sciences just never really did much. For I me. hated chemistry. I loved rocks growing up, though, which is why Geodude was one of my favorite Pokemon. I he thought he was a, a he funny is a guy. rock. No legs. <laughs> No legs, just, just arms, big fists. He, he could give floats. rated E for everyone. He could give two thumbs up. Though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I are there. Well, first off, 
I also don't know if I believe dreams mean anything, but I do think recurring dreams mean something. I, sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And well, do you have I any wonder... other recurring dreams, Ethan? Well, a lot of people have this one, but like the teeth falling teeth. out. I get that one all the time. Yeah. I think the brain sort of locks into like, uh, I'm stressed. This is my go-to stress dream. Because like I'll get the, t yeah. it's actually been quite a while since I had the tooth dream, but that is one that I, I'll have. But where it, it's like, you'll start to feel like, your teeth just wiggling a little bit. Oh, God, dude. You know, and you're like, is my fucking tooth going to fall out? And then, I, though I did yeah. have a sick pleasure of getting, like, pulling that tooth out when we, I was younger. When it was like, when yes. you're like, oh, I got a wiggler. That's it's ready to come. Mm. Uh, but I, I have I to. I swallowed a tooth once. All right. D did you poop it out or? <laughs> Must have. You I didn't hope. search? Like, or like, you did not I like. Not like in Did the sense I of like through my shit. You, you like not like you put gloves on and like we're looking through your feces, but more like you looked in the toilet every now and then be like, is it there? No, no. I remember uh I was we were my my dad owned a, a computer store. All right, this like is an a, interesting term. And it had like a and he worked with an Argentinian man who had a robotic arm named BB. Okay, even more interesting. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? This, is a, this <laughs> isn't a dream. <laughs> for the for the record, this is not a dream. <laughs> this is <laughs> real life we're talking about. His name BB he made a robotic arm for himself. He smoked a pipe. But um <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and and this is we're talking about teeth. This is how you figuring out your tooth. You but, swallowed it. Uh, we were at the computer store and my dad was working and my brother and I were just playing. There was like a, it was like an industrial area, but the outside had like a marsh in the back and we had like a path and we were like playing tag or something. Uh, and at one point I felt, I tasted like a little pebble in my mouth. I was mm, like, oh, there's yeah. a little pebble and I just swallowed it. And then <laughs> as I was running around some more, I was like, one of my teeth is out. It's gone. And I realized I swallowed my tooth. Or... You your tooth fell out and a pebble did get in your mouth and you swallowed the pebble. Or my tooth got out and a pebble got in my mouth and yeah. I swallowed the pebble. The old switcheroo. Yeah. <laughs> did you ask the guy at the why did you bring out the guy with the robotic arm? Did he have just color? Okay, because I was picturing that he helped you like <laughs> extract the tooth yeah. somehow. <laughs> no. Like you had some fucking like minority report guy helping you with the fucking tooth. <laughs> uh he I, blindfolds uh, me, makes me eat a moldy sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh I, it's weird. I agree with you that we all probably have some sort of base level setting of stress that goes into our mind when we're sleeping. But I do think it's odd that everyone's dream is the same to that stress response. Because it makes sense that humans would all have a stress dream. But it's weird to me that they would all have the same stress dream. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It must be some sort of like base level coding that every human has. Yeah. Well, I feel like teeth is a very, you know. People don't like teeth. They don't like anything you the quickest way to make an audience squirm do something with a character's teeth where they're getting tortured. Yeah, that's why the movie the uh, uh, I forget what movie it was. I think it was called the, the tooth man. No, it's called the runaway uh, runaway. It was with uh, I think it was mm, Dustin Hoffman marathon man marathon man. Oh, is it safe? Is there's a dentist, a German dentist who's torturing him and he's trying to get him to answer this question. Is it safe to go to some place or something? And Hoffman's not telling him, and he just starts pulling out teeth one by one. Yeah, it's very unpleasant. Uh, it's hard to watch. That, that's got to be the body, just uh, under you know anxiety, uh, honing in on like uh, probably the number one anxiety of that anyone can have is is uh, you know losing their teeth. mortality, the human body falling apart. Well, I've heard and that the teeth are just like a very visceral representation yeah, of that. Your true. teeth start falling out where that you can't get them back. I've yeah. heard the teeth is a representation of not feeling like you're in control, which is anxiety yeah. 101. I have sure. probably an anxiety dream like that maybe once or twice a week. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the one I have most common, though, is I'm driving a car on the freeway. Sarah, Sarah has car car. Uh, this one's the worst. Where and she I'm like, like, is not in control of the vehicle. Yeah, I'm like driving on the freeway. And I'm like, oh, this car's in front of me. He puts their brake flies on. I'll just stop my car. And I go to hit the brake pedal whoa that's and the car I won't like break yeah. and i'm like hey what the fuck and i'm like slamming the brake as hard as i can and sometimes i have this dream so much that like in the dream now i'm thinking god i hope this is a dream yeah it's like my brake <laughs> is really not working but i think i'm dreaming you gotta stop watching man of the house before you go to sleep <laughs> what, the fuck? what the fuck are you talking about that happens to chevy chase <laughs> in the movie man of the house i've never seen man of the house they cut his brakes oh nice yeah 
Uh, his son is Jonathan Taylor Thomas. His wife is Farrah Fawcett. Do you ever get like chasing dreams? Like you're being chased by something? I don't get that one. I get that one a lot. Or not a lot. I want to say a lot. Maybe like. What chases you? Usually like some type of serial killer. Whoa. Whoa, Whoa shit. What does he look like? I, it's different every time, but the most recent one I can remember. It, it's been a while since I've had one of these, but. Stephen Lynn? No comment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, that would be the scariest dream on that Earth. That would be scary. Steven Lim chasing me, but like the T-1000 with his hands like just fully just spread what out. What if his like hands this? didn't move at all? He ran so fast, but his arms just stayed <laughs> by his side. <laughs> I used to have a... I, one of my good friends, Roland, he... Uh, I always, he's one of the weirdest walkers on Earth because he doesn't move his arms while he walks. He just kind of walks with his arms limp by his sides. And uh, I love watching him walk. It's a very funny guy. I always <laughs> hate to see you go, but love to watch him. I love watching him. I love watching him go. I love watching him leave. It's a funny thing to watch. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's insane. Because you know that every face you see in a dream is somebody you've actually seen in real life. The brain is not capable yeah. of making up a face. I don't, I, I don't really... The thing with my dreams is I don't have very distinct like pictures. Like I remember the concept and some images of it, but... I can't remember a face, but yeah, Sarah, oh, Sarah will will in the morning sometimes will just relay dreams to me that are so detailed <laughs> and like wild. narrative driven. If you say yeah. it more, like that is the thing. If you say it more, then they become more. Well, your mind, yeah, yeah like becomes uh, attuned to picking up the details, which is why, like dream journals, they say like right. if you have even an inkling of a dream, wake up, write down what you can remember. If you do that every morning, you'll start because they're like, well, you dream every night. This is what I, I and I'm not. Look, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Uh, I think you dream more often <laughs> than you. you realize, but often you just don't remember it. You don't recall it. I've always remembered my dreams, which is really unfortunate because ever since I was a little kid, I've had nightmares maybe 90 percent of the time and yeah. I dream every night. So I'm always like treated to some sort of horrifying short film <laughs> every yeah, time I go crazy. to sleep. And I like Sarah will wake up in the morning and I'll turn over and I'll tell Mari, I just had the craziest dream. And she, so now it's become like a routine. I'll like turn over and she'll go, oh, let me guess, you had a crazy dream. And now she's just kind of just like is ready to receive the crazy information. But I've had some pretty vivid, insane dreams like that giant snake that ate you. That ate me. And my mom. Yeah. And your mom. And my mom. Whoa. But yours was a very noble death. Yeah. Like you sacrificed yourself to save me, That's I, cool. and I'll never forget. I'll never, uh, I'll never forget that. I've always thought in my subconscious, I think Shane is a solid dude because he sacrificed himself. I told you the one I had about where I was. I was in a parking garage. Oh God! It was really dark, and I parking was like going to my car, scary. and it was between you know my car and another car, so it was kind of narrow and shadowy. Someone came up to me and shot me in the chest twice <laughs> with a gun. <laughs> What? And I fell down on the ground. They walked away, and I just laid there on the ground, bleeding out. And then I died. Oh my and I died. God. What do you think that means? I don't know. So what? I'm gonna die. Yeah. What if it's a premonition? <laughs> <laughs> was the guy Stephen Lim? <laughs> it was Stephen Lim. It was before I ever knew him. <laughs> now it's I finally like, know why I recognized him. It's like Looper, dude. <laughs> uh, I I have to say, your dreams are more real world scary. Your nightmares that you have well, told me? Well, yeah, growing up, I would always have dreams of a big, uh, dark dog that would bite my face. I used to have a dream of my dad staring at me through a window, but it was an evil version of my dad. You know big this teeth. one. Yeah. He had big teeth like Inspector Gadget, the evil Whoa. Inspector Gadget. Uh, and it was really scary. He would smile at me through the window. Yeah. Didn't nobody like wants it. that. Nobody nobody wants that. But I, I don't know what they mean. I, 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 I think the recurring ones mean something. The wild ones, like the you getting eaten by a snake. I don't think that means anything. I do remember that one very vividly, though. I remember one dream I was like flying over. This is one of my few like good dreams. I was flying over Los Angeles on a giant star that you could like ride. You know, remember oh like Mario? God. Like you would like yeah. you fly around like on the a star. The more you know star? No, more like Super Mario 64 when you would oh, get on like top. Oh, like the Oh, yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. Buy, yeah. be on yeah, top yeah. of a giant star and I was flying around it, but I was naked. <laughs> And I was just like, just letting everything like, and I, remember yeah. at, and I remember at one point I was like, this feels so good, the wind. And I was just kind of sitting there and I was standing up kind of like spread eagle. And I was just like, wow. And I was just flying around. Over Hollywood? Over, not over Hollywood, but like over like my like San Gabriel Valley area yeah, yeah. And, and greater Los Angeles. I think I might've gone on Soarin' over California recently. So I was just kind of like doing that. 
And I woke up. I didn't really know what it meant, but I was glad I had it. Yeah. I wish that happened more often. That sounds cool. I would prefer not to have nightmares every night. That would be great. There was a while where I, uh, I was like, I, I was doing the the dream journal where you recall mm. it in the morning, and that actually, I think I've heard some people say that like that can cause like more lucid dreaming. I want to yeah. be able to lucid dream. So and there was bad. a I've done it once. There was a phase. wait. Really? I've done kind it of, once. Yeah. Wait, I've done what? It a few times. Really? Um, but the thing is, every time I'm curious to hear your experience with it. A lot of times I would do it and I would be conscious of the fact that it was a dream. I'd be like, oh, it's a dream, but I'm here. And but the issue would be is that the dream would be that I was in my room and that <laughs> like I was like very sluggish. So I would often just like roll out of my bed and onto the floor and be laying on the floor. <laughs> it sounds like sleep paralysis. You sound like Leo on the Quaaludes <laughs> in Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> But I'd be like, I can do whatever I want, but my bones are too heavy and I can't move. I'm just rolling around on the ground. And then I'd wake up, I'd be in my bed. I was never on my floor. Um, but I do, there was one time where I did sort of crack it and I was in my room, but then I went to the window and I like jumped out of it and flew. I remember flying up to the, a tree and then sort of flying off into the air. That's kind of cool. It was great. And I remember feeling the wind. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I got to keep this up. And then it was just too much work. They say a lot of times you could do it, though, like if you're starting to do like dream journals and stuff by just consciously as you're falling asleep being like, I want to I want to dream. I want to like you got to like tell yourself. Mm. I wish we had a podcast where every time we did an episode, we just talked about that week of dreams. Week of dreams. That could be a segment. Yeah. It'd be sick. What week was your dream. what did yeah, what you do your in your lucid, lucid dream? dream? The one time I've done it. I was like mid dream and then I kind of had like a moment where I was like, oh, wait, this is just a dream. Was it a bad dream? No, it was a I don't really know what was happening before it, but I remember flying after because that's the one thing that I would want to do. You got it. <laughs> so if you ever lose a dream, you got to fly. Yeah, I uh, wish. You got it. I, I mean, it's you the one to. thing you got to do. It'd be great. I think it's like kind of like Neo in the Matrix. Oh, just nice. Like I can do anything. It kind of feels like that. That's I awesome. remember actually... Uh, I had a That's friend great. who would lucid dream. He, he was like seemingly very adept at it. I don't know. Uh, and I remember telling him about when I flew and we talked about how we flew and it was like the same technique. You go down a little bit and then like soar up a little bit more like these little. And it was weird that there was like a similar almost as if it's its own dimension. Whoa. Like in Look Who's Talking Now where John Travolta and Kirstie Alley have dreams at the same time and are in each other's dream. That's interesting. Yeah. Would you rather... Have you ever seen Look Who's Talking Now? I have not. Mm, that's but I'm going to check that out. Yeah, it's really good. It's a good would, Christmas movie. Would you rather have the ability to lucid dream every night or to be able to just tune in to whoever's dream you wanted to every night? That one sounds fun. I'd like it because that's, that's streaming. That's a you're whole like, new streaming you're, you're service. service. You're a streaming service. Oh, man, if I could tune in to Stephen Lim's dreams... Well, I don't know if I want to do that. I do. <laughs> to give you, what does or that maybe look like? maybe in the next night, like I'll tune into Ethan tonight. Let's see what let's, let's see what's on Ethan. This sounds like an invasion of privacy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he, no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He wouldn't know I'm there. People just start seeing Ryan in their dreams. No, but they so. wouldn't know I'm there. <laughs> but then I, you'd have to show up to work the next day. You know when you know when like and face them. <laughs> you know when like you die in Call of Duty and you could just. You know, yeah, observe you observe, observe someone else's spectate, POV. It's called. And on the bottom of the screen, it says like oh. there's like one spectator. Yeah, they wouldn't even see that. They no. wouldn't know that I was there. Yeah. I, I but would, you're there. You've but I was there. You've seen it all. I could be tuning into Shane. You've seen everything. Maybe I've tuned into Shane every day. Yeah, you see me getting mauled by a dog. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see that. I would, then I could switch the channel. I'm like, ah, fuck this. this what is if, getting what too if dark. I dream of that every night and my brain just blocks it out by now? <laughs> Every night I go to sleep, experience un unknowable <laughs> terrors, dog chewing my face off. It's weird. I don't think I dream. And Sarah's like, well, I well, think you do. Well, he screams in his sleep every night, so he's clearly... I think you do, because every night you scream at the top of your lungs, my face. Stop biting my face. Yeah. Uh, if I could switch to channels, that'd be pretty sweet. I don't... I feel like unlimited lucid dreaming where you're in full control... It'd be too much. Would you be well-rested? Is the bot like that? That's an interesting question. Because dream, you know, sleep is the time when your your mind is is sort of clear clearing away the cobwebs in that old brain of yours. Then again, if I was able to lucid dream every night, 
this is a dorky thing to do, but I would probably like learn a language. Is that how it works? I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> could you, could you, you can't dream a language that you don't know. No, but like if in the dream I'm lucid dreaming, I could like. What? Oh, I guess there would be a book I could pick up. Right. You're going to practice your Duolingo you're, in your dream? Yeah, I was going to say, I wish I could use it as another. You're limited to what you is already in your brain. <laughs> that sucks, dude. I would love to be able to use it as like an additional 12 hours of, not 12 hours, additional eight hours of productivity if I'm lucky, if I get eight. That sounds like a Stephen I was Lim reading. Dream. Yeah, Stephen <laughs> Lim's like, I want to optimize. <laughs> I was reading something recently because uh, I've been playing piano for for this past year. Yeah. And... Only recently have I have I sort of like started to hone in on like what my practice habits are and because I I practice a lot but it, it hasn't been with what like uh, I I've never researched like good practice habits I've just been like <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna sit down and practice everything I know and do whatever do your mm -hmm. scales scales and you know, all that stuff um, but I was reading this thing where someone was like the best thing you need to know about practicing here's the key sleep play yeah. for like you know no matter how long you play you can play for 10 minutes a day as long as you like go to sleep every night get good sleep <laughs> like even if you play like right before bed go to sleep once you feel yourself hitting a point where like your fingers stop sort of paying attention to what you're trying to do because like sometimes you hit a, like a wall when yeah. you're practicing that's like your mind being like we've absorbed enough right now we need to file this away because your brain when you go to sleep just like you know strengthens the synapses and stuff isn't the best time to practice an, int an instrument or learn a language or learn anything isn't it in the morning isn't that when your brain is the most receptive to I don't know. new info i don't know huh i've never played piano in the morning sleep is just incredibly important that's something you're i'm starting to realize as i get older because i don't <laughs> yeah. get enough sleep i think yeah. yeah or restful sleep i used to but then i started playing Fortnite. how much hours of sleep are you getting in there two that's not true <laughs> <laughs> uh I think I've all, almost always been in like the seven-ish range. Seven That's to, good. Seven to eight. That's really know. good. Eight is what they say you should strive for. I used to, I think especially during the pandemic when, you know. We seven and a half though, not eight, right? What? Seven and a half, not eight because uh, of the REM cycles. I don't know. I don't think those are like. They are real. Like, because it's like 90. No, I know they're real, but I don't think they're like hardwired to be like. 90 exact minutes right are they i mean it's the if you do wake up at the end of the cycle you'll be the most rested that sounds nice. otherwise if you don't you're going to be at some other version of like a deep sleep groggy still yeah. grumpy mm -hmm. that's why like if you could do seven and a half it's better than eight yeah i like sleeping i fucking love it dude if i could sleep all day i would that's actually what i did this last week i slept until like 11 a.m. every I can't day. Remember the last time I did that? I didn't think I could do it anymore, and then I did it. But then again, I was also consequently now going to sleep at like 2 a.m. Yeah, just doing bullshit. I don't really do. It's been a while since I did that. I I I can occasionally every now and then I'll be up to like 1:30 or two. Do you feel That's guilty? Rare though. Um, I feel guilty when I do that. No, now. I don't mm. because it's pretty infrequent. And if I'm like up that late, then I'm like, well, you know, I was either reading something or or you know, it's like whatever why so, do you feel yourself guilty. some slack i feel like i was doing uh just not something not productive for my body like and i'm like i'm not doing anything productive after i'm like i'm watching bullshit on youtube i'm watching like shows and sometimes like if i'm up around one i'll actually have the thought like oh man i'm really bummed out right now that i i'm up, up up this late for no reason so i will actually try and do something productive so that i feel better to go to sleep like i will like hmm. you know look at go look at some emails <laughs> or something like that go on computer look uh, at emails yeah. yeah or read a book of something that i think is useful mm. uh because i won't be able to fall asleep and it happens all the time like when i have like a week of like last week where i was you know not working that week i uh yeah i, I was falling asleep around like one two o'clock in the morning and feeling really bad and then i would wake up at 11 and be like Ugh. extend some grace to yourself yeah man. you're very self-critical <laughs> Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah, this is every one of these is like a therapy yeah. session. Uh, I kind of like that too, though. Do you? Do, uh, you are? Yeah. Well, I feel like recently I've been getting better sleep. Magnesium helps a lot. Oh, interesting. I, there's like this passion flower extract that's supposed to make you sleepier. I've been using that. Is too. that like a specific strain of weed? No, it's not. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, weed actually doesn't help me fall asleep it makes my mind move more it 
I it helps me fall asleep, but I don't think it actually results in restful sleep when I'm yeah, that's actually what I heard. asleep. There uh, was a there was a night uh when we were in Chicago for our wedding, uh Sarah and I went to my parents' house like a week beforehand because we had a bunch of shit to take care of, you know, before. And there was one night where I was like, Oh, we just traveled. We've got a big day tomorrow. I could use a sleep gummy. And we didn't bring any, but my my dad was like, Oh, we've got some. I was like, Oh, cool. Oh man. Uh I was like, How much are these? And he was like, Oh, they're like I think he said they were five or something. Uh I remember the story. I can have ten and be fine. Like ten ten will make me sleepy. Yeah. Five will make me like yeah. you know, just a little like cozy. Mm-hmm. Ten will make me sleepy. Beyond that, I, yeah. We're it's party town. <laughs> yeah. Um so I was like, I'll take ten. That'll I'll be out like a light. Um so I took two and then I looked at the package and they were ten each. And I was oh. like, oh, this is that's twenty. <laughs> I was like, hey, <laughs> this is more than and now it's a race against the clock to fall asleep before it hits. Yeah. So then I was and because uh at my parents' house, the rooms are the beds are like smaller. So when Sarah and I stay there, we usually sleep in different rooms if we can. Oh, yeah, I love Lucy it. Uh yeah. So I was I was in one of the rooms just trying to fall asleep. And I I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> you missed the train, dude. <laughs> Good luck waiting. <laughs> I missed it and I was high out of my mind. Uh <laughs> and it was one of those <laughs> and I was like I like it was so energized that oh, I no. I could not fall asleep and there was like one of those moments where especially cuz like I was awake and I was trying to fall asleep I should have just like well, I, I didn't really want to move. So I, I, it was one of those moments where I was suddenly like, ah, oh, my body's kind of achy. And I realized, well, it's because I've been laying perfectly <laughs> still on my side with my eyes open without moving a single muscle for like 45 minutes. And then I was like, oh, if I just move, that feels better for the body. Just sitting there like one of those victims in Wolf Creek, your spinal cord cut, <laughs> just sitting there with your eyes open, terrified. Eventually I fell asleep, but I was like, man, I really missed my window on that one. Didn't you say at one point it felt like you were moving fast too because you were lying, but you were lying down? Like it felt like everything was like, you were shivering. I, was, I think I was shivering a bit, yeah. yeah. Every now and then if I have too much, sometimes weed will give me like a little a little chill. This is exactly what happened to Sarah and I when we took that flight with you to New York. I you think. guys. We were out of our fucking minds. It was the same thing. We both took a very strong weed gummy because I was like, well, I we didn't s- know it was strong. It was like little chocolates. But we wa- either way, we, we were mixed like, it into a trail mix. That's right. And but we wanted to take it to be asleep for the flight. I forget where we were flying. We were going to New York for that uh, the aforementioned oh, for the, BuzzFeed the unsolved, unsolved thing. The unsolved thing. If you fans of this podcast will remember, we talked about this yeah. weird party. And I was like, oh, we'll take this weed gummy and we'll be knocked out. And Sarah's like, let's do it. And Shane did it as well. And then the flight got delayed and then it got delayed again. Yeah. Because you guys had sort of timed it perfectly for the flight where we were like, we're going to be getting on this plane in one hour. (laughs) Let's let's have these at this given time. Cut to like two and a half hours later. (laughs) We're still in the terminal and I am like losing my mind awake and we get into this plane. And I was well, even before the plane, when we were waiting at the (laughs) gate, (laughs) I know what you're going to say. I was like, hey, do you guys want some water or anything? And neither of them looked at me. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, you guys want some water? And you guys were both like, what? <laughs> what? Like, what? Water? We also kept working each other up because I don't know who would start it, but we were both kept going like every now and then one of us would go, are we sure the flight didn't leave? <laughs> And then I would, and I would go. You're right. I think the flight didn't like, leave. It didn't leave yet, guys. And we're we were fine. Like, and then, I was like, I'm going to go get you some water. And Sarah would be like, Could you go check? And I think you did check maybe once or twice. It was very nice of you. Yeah. Just for the peace of mind, and because I, I was like, I'm sure. I think she's right. I think the plane left already. <laughs> I think. And then you were like, Nope. Yeah. Well, I don't know how you were okay, but well, well, I wasn't later in the flight. <laughs> well, because the the three different experiences of us on that flight uh, are really great. So Sarah is small enough that she curled up into a little ball, fell asleep for the entire flight. Yeah. She nailed it. She nailed it. Once she got on. Knocked it out of the park. My experience was sometimes when I'm on a plane 
the only way I can sleep, because I believe we were taking a red eye, yes, is by taking my backpack, putting it up on the, the tray. I've seen you do this move. Putting my hands down and, yeah. and sleeping like sort of on my hands. So I did that and I wasn't high when I did that. And then I woke up in the middle of the flight. I had a face mask on. Yeah. And I sat up. I was extremely high. And both of my hands were numb. <laughs> and I didn't, I forgot I had a face mask on. <laughs> and then I remembered and I was trying to take it off with <laughs> little cat paws. <laughs> My hands that weren't working, and I was kind of freaking out. And meanwhile, Ryan, <laughs> I was over, I was sitting next to this guy. I walk in. I was already out of my mind, so I'm like, I'm gonna do everything I can to not interact with anybody. So I just <laughs> sat down and I just kind of was just sitting there like a rock. And I was like, I'm just gonna lean back and close my eyes and try and go to sleep. And meanwhile, the whole room just feels like it's spinning, and I'm like shivering. And I'm just like, okay, just breathe. Just focus on your breathing. And then this little intrusive thought peeks in. I was like, how long has it been since you took your last breath? And I was like, <laughs> is it weird that I, ha maybe I'm breathing too fast. Does this guy next to me think I'm breathing too fast? And I was like, I need to take slower breaths. Maybe because I thought I was breathing like, <laughs> like a dog, like a dog that was panting. And I was like, I need to take a slower breath so this guy doesn't think I'm weird because if he thinks I'm weird, he's going to talk to me and then I have to talk to him. Oh so I was like, God. all right, I'll take, I'll take some slower breaths. And then I'm doing that and I get this thought of like, when was the last time I actually took a breath? Have I been holding my breath this entire time? I don't think I've been holding my breath this entire time. And by the time I had actually taken my next breath, I had been holding my breath for about a minute, I guess. And so oh all of a sudden, God. I'm just sitting there. Imagine just a guy sitting next to you on a plane looking like he's asleep and just doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you hold your breath really long underwater and you're like, I need to get to the surface because I'm going to die. That's exactly what I did out of nowhere on the plane. And I know it was that abrupt because the guy went, Jesus. <laughs> and, like, and I was like, ah, oh, sorry. Just didn't know I was breathing. I just <laughs> love that. I love the triptych of... Sarah fast asleep, <laughs> me desperately trying to claw this off my face with my dead hands, and you just going <gasps> just, just from a dead stillness, just <laughs> incredible. And uh, and the guy freaked out, and I to make him feel better did actually say sorry. I just didn't know I was breathing. That probably and it made him feel so much better. And he went, huh? Uh, <laughs> and I was like, I just went back to sleep. And uh, it was a nightmare flight. I don't think I fell asleep for another 30 minutes. Uh, but anyways, yeah, don't don't take a red eye. Honestly, it's a bad. It's never good. It's rarely good. And especially don't time it with a sleep gummy because now, you, you know, the flight could be delayed and, and it's bad news. Well, uh, I think I think that wraps up this episode. Thank you for coming on, Ethan. Yeah, Ethan, yeah. it was a delight to have you. It was, here. It was so. great to have have you here. I, was, I almost instinctually asked, is there anything you'd like to plug? But you know what? Is there anything you'd like to plug? Is there something that you're like, because you DJ, you dance. Yeah. Um, survival mode is coming now. Oh, yeah. Soon. Survival mode is very, very fun. I've been watching the cuts from this season. They're, it's it's yeah. a blast. Is, is the Bigfoot episode Not edited yet? yet? No. Who's editing seen. the Bigfoot think, episode? Wait, what what game is that again? It's uh, Sasquatch. It's I think it's I called. Think I think so. No, it's just called Bigfoot. Bigfoot. I think Ant is. Oh man, he's gonna be in for a real treat. That, yeah, yeah, that's that's incredibly fun. That is maybe the one of the that's one of the most fun gaming sessions I've ever been a part of, All regardless of, of shooting or not. It's a really fun season. Us adding a second computer. Oh God, <laughs> really? Yeah. What a godsend. <laughs> yeah, it really makes it a lot more fun. Honestly, that does it for this episode of Pod Watcher. If you guys are watching this. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Helps us keep making the show. And if you're listening to this, go ahead and rate this, uh, the podcast five stars only. And then uh, and then subscribe as well because it does help us keep making Pod Watcher for you guys. But until next time, uh, I guess I guess that's that. Oh, and also just a quick little thing. Uh, Steven is also not going to be on uh, the next episode as well because he is off shooting something right now that's very exciting. I can't tell you guys what it is, but I do promise you will like it. So um yeah next next week we will have another guest as well that is not steven and uh it's gonna be fun bye everybody <laughs>